Yeah, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how to implement a scroll to top button, um, which I'm using on top of our current React app that we've got up and running. So the first tutorial was to create this nav bar, which is responsive. And then if you remember the second one, which is the previous video, was to create this um, horizontal scroll bar, which I think we've just set it to a big blue bar at the moment. Um, perhaps not the, the nicest of styling, but um, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this scroll to top button. So if I go back up to the top again, you'll see it just sort of disappears. Um, and then scrolling down after 500 pixels, it will come into view. If I click the button, it will scroll us all the way back to the top, as you can see. Um, and we can actually see where we are, obviously with our horizontal scroll bar as well. Um, so yeah, that's the, the, the effect that we'll be um, implementing today. You can see I've got a slide in animation. I haven't created a slide out or anything else. I'll sort of leave that up to you. Um, but yeah, we're just using a font awesome icon um, and then a little bit of CSS for styling and then a small amount of JavaScript in our React app um, to create this scroll to top button. So yeah, let's get started on creating this from scratch. So what I'm going to do is just discard the changes um, for now. So as you'll see, there's not that much that we need to actually do here. Um, there we go. <clears throat> so we'll just get back to a fresh slate. If I refresh the app, which we have running at the moment, um, you can see when I scroll down, no button appears now anymore, which is perfect. So I'll bring this over just a little bit and close this off. And then essentially what I want to do here um, is I'm just going to put all of the logic inside my app.js and app.css. Um, feel free to create sort of your own component. Um, and, you know, obviously the React way would be to componentize it, but I'm just for now going to leave it all within app.js because we can actually use some of the logic um, that we have for this on scroll here. Um, sorry, on scroll function for the horizontal scroll bar. So again, probably these can be two separate components, but um, as I said, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just put them all into one. So uh, the first thing we're going to want is import, and then this is going to be font awesome. Um, I think it's called arrow up, and we need to import that from, and it's going to be our react uh, dash icons slash FA, uh, like so. And the reason I can have this, and let's just see. Oh, FA, that should be okay now. There we go. And the reason we do this, or we can access the font awesome arrow up is because we've imported via NPM React icons. So that was done as well in the previous um, tutorial or the initial one, sorry, for the nav bar. So we can get this um, hamburger menu and the cross and also the React logo over here. So these are all coming from React icons. Um, but yeah, you can just do a simple npm install react icons and then you should be able to see it in your package.json And if I scroll down Where we could where is it? There we are react icons. So that's the version I'm using um, Just for reference if you wanted to check that out So yeah, we've got our fa arrow up and what we can do with this is actually just render that straight on the page So it's kind of like a component itself um, so just below our progress wrapper div um, for the horizontal scroll bar scroll bar, sorry, I'm going to put um, FA arrow up like so. And we're going to give it a class name just for now. And we're going to leave it blank. And I think there was something else that we need, but I will come back to that. So just here, we'll just put an empty string for the class name because we're going to be conditionally rendering it. Um, and as you can see, we've got our arrow on the page here. So we obviously want to sort of turn this into a button and have some on click events. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll come back to those. So for now, let's just go to on scroll. And what we actually want to do is to hide it initially. And then when the user scrolls down, uh, let's say 500 pixels or any pixel amount, we want to then show that button. So one way we can do this is to actually just, I guess, bootstrap or use our on scroll function that we have already. Um, again, you can create this separately if you're doing a your, sort of your own component, but because I've already got uh, an event listener for the scroll event, and then it fires this function, I'm just gonna put the same logic in here. i will just call this scroll to top button logic, um, just like that. So what we want to do, it will be um, window dot, um, so window dot 
scroll Y. And if that's greater than 500 pixels, so that's the Y axis, um, if that's greater than 500 pixels, um, and we're going to do a ternary operator here. So if that is true, we're going to set show button um, to true. And then after that, we'll do the colon else set show button to false. And obviously, we need to create this piece of state here. Um, so I'm going to do that just above the on scroll. And we'll do const um, show button and set sh show button set show button like so and um, that will be use state like that and we'll set it to false to begin with and we can see that's kind of auto imported as well from react which is great so we've got our set show button um, and then we're actually going to use this show button variable here to conditionally render um, some classes um, or, or two classes I guess um, on the FA arrow up. So we're going to say if show button, and then if that is true, we want to do, let's say, um, show button, um, else um, hidden. And actually, these should be strings because they are um, is it class names here. So we'll do show button, and then if we don't want to show it, it will be hidden, like so. Okay. So obviously, we haven't created any of the, the CSS for this yet, but just so you can see, if I go to app.css um, or whichever file you're hooked up with, um, if I do the class of hidden and let's say display none, hit enter, we should see that disappears there. So you can see we're, um, because, where is it? On scroll, sorry, set show button is false. Um, it's applying this hidden class and that's what's not now showing the, the button here. Um, if I scroll down 500 pixels, I wonder if it'll come in. No. So it looks like obviously we need to obviously have some classing, uh, or sort of class and sort of start attributes for show button now. Um, so just for these, we'll just do dot show button. And I actually have some sort of pre made ones ready to go. So I'm just going to sort of find those and, and type them out here. Um, so we're going to do position of fixed. Uh, background dash color um, of transparent. We're going to do um, right will be minus 100 pixels because initially it's actually going to come across from right to left when we do a transition. So we actually want to start it off at minus 100 pixels. So it's going to be sort of off the page. Um, and bottom, let's just do 50 pixels from the bottom. So it's going to be at the bottom right hand corner um, when the page. Or when the page loads and then the user scrolls down, let's say 500 pixels or whatever value we set that to. Um, font size is needed here because this is a um, an icon. Um, so that's one way to control the size. Let's just do color. I'm going to give that a color of gray. Um, again, feel free to change these sort of to however you wish. And cursor, cursor pointer. Um, just so that it sort of has that button emulation almost of, of what it should look like. And if I go over here, let's just set our button initial state to true, just so we can see it, um, like so. So if I hit save, that should re-render. Do we have our button? No. Let's just have a look here. Okay. Uh, of course, so it's because it's, you know, 100 pixels off to the right. Um, so if I take that off, is it the bottom? There it is. So yeah, we can see it there. Um, but essentially what we want to do then is actually have a, um, a, a an animation. So to bring it into view. Um, I just noticed as well, we actually want to transform and then we're going to translate and that will be on the X axis, so left to right, and that will be minus 150 pixels. Um, so actually here it is now, and then if you remember, when we then um, sort of hide it, it's gonna go off um, sort of to the, to the right hand side. So we can then do animate, um, animation, sorry, animation, and we're going to call that slide left and we'll give it a one second um, animation time basically. So if you're unaware of animations, um, 
I think, I'm not sure if there's other ways, but one way is to use keyframes. So we'll do keyframes. And then the syntax for this would be to reference um, the, the, the same label that we're using in the animation. So slide left, and then we open up some braces and you can basically go however many um, different percentage um, that you'd like. So I'm just gonna do 2%, so that's gonna be zero and then 100. And we just want to transform, we do translate X uh, over here and that will be at minus 100 starting and then at 100%, so after one second, transform, translate X will be sort of minus 150 pixels. Um, so we should be able to see now, um, if I reload the page, I wonder if it will slide in. So there we can see it sliding in here. Um, and actually I just noticed the background color of transparent. Um, let's make this uh, light gray, like gray, like so. And let's just then also give it a border radius of 45%. And I think that will be a circle. No, maybe it's 50%. Oops, 50%. There we go. And also just a little bit of padding. Um, so 0.25 rem will do here. And that should look a little bit better. So there's our button. And you can obviously see at the moment on click, it doesn't do anything. So if we go back to our app.js file, um, we'll just want to add an on-click event. So on-click, and we're gonna say that is sort of scroll to top. So passing in a function here, which we just need to create, and we're gonna add that now. So um, I'll put it below the, the use effect. So we'll just do const scroll to top like that. And when that fires, um, what do we want to do? We want to do window dot scroll to, and these are the coordinates, um, or I think, sorry, in pixel values where you want to scroll to. So we want to scroll to zero, zero, which is sort of top left, I guess, um, or just the very top of the page. So if I come down a bit and scroll, we can see actually there our, um, our button comes into view. So that keyframe animations coming across for one second and then if I click the button, you can see it scrolls all the way to the top, but it's quite rapid. If you see, we get to the end and you'll just see the progress bar, which is quite handy actually in this tutorial um, to sort of visualize it. But as you can see, it just whips straight across. Um, so what we want to do in our, let's see, app.css, I've got a, a global reset here. Um, we want to put scroll behavior to smooth. And in doing that, what we should now be able to see once that all saves is if I scroll down to the bottom, let's say all the way to the bottom, if I click the add sort of yeah scroll to top button, that will go smoothly. So you can see that nice smooth action rather than just jumping to zero zero um, on the scroll to. So yeah, that's kind of it for the scroll to top button. You can see it's really quite simple. There's just a little bit of logic to work out. Um, when the button should show or not, and then a scroll to top function, which just scrolls the window smoothly to the top um, with the CSS as well. So yeah, that's kind of it for this uh, tutorial. I think I'll be continuing on in this vein and just adding little features and components um, as and when to this React app. But as I said, the actually all the code for this will be under the same repo as before. It will be on the scroll to top branch if you want to check it out. Um, and obviously, yeah, you can use this in a sort of componentized um, or just add it into your app. Um, and it's quite a cool feature, I think, especially, again, for long pages, similar to the horizontal scroll bar. Um, it's good to sort of allow your users to get back to the top, let's say, if they scroll down really far reading a blog post or something like that. So, yeah, that's all for today. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.